So thank you very much, uh, Karina and the panelists, for your contribution to this uh, very interesting session. We are now coming to uh, the close of uh, the event, and uh, I have uh, the pleasure and the honor to welcome for the closing comments Cécile Jodogne, who is Secretary of State and in charge of uh, foreign trade and other competencies, but that's uh, the most important one and who has been uh, very uh, active in her political career in the municipality of Scarbeck as a councillor and then as, as a deputy mayor, as a mayor. And uh, she has uh, taken time from her busy agenda uh, to um, um, offer us uh, the closing comments of this event. Cecile, thank you very much. Ladies, and few gentlemen, members of the panel, first of all, thank you for a very interesting panel discussion. I find it particularly enlightening to listen to speakers from different origins and backgrounds discussing the theme of gender in the workplace. As Secretary of State for Foreign Trade, I regularly organize women in business meeting during economic missions. The ID is to gather high-achieving women from the host country and from the Belgium delegation to discuss the place of women in their respective job market. These meetings enabled myself, as well as the participants, to learn about the sometimes heavy weight of cultural and religious traditions on, profession, on professional relationships. But, Regardless of different local characteristics, a common pattern always emerges. Everywhere on the planet, despite an ever-increasing ever female presence and success in higher education, women stay underrepresented in high-profile and managerial functions, especially within private companies. Naturally, the questions of work-life balance and of maternity and child rearing play a role. But despite the different solutions provided by society, many women mention feelings of loneliness and guilt emanating from the compromise they make between maternity and career. Getting together and discussing what in the end clearly is a universal issue seems to help the women have met to realize that their experience is in no way unique and that raising children doesn't imply undermining one's career. Another issue is, women is, per is women's perceived lack of credibility in the workplace. They are considered as weaker negotiators, as hesitating decision makers, as bad time managers. Yet, several studies prove that a balanced proportion of women in leading roles contributes to the company's success. Quotas, as well as awareness campaigns, are slowly changing things. But the pace remains slow. In Belgium, for example, only 34.6% of managerial positions are filled by women. Only 26% of the board members of companies listed on the stock market are women. The statistics are poorer, considering that the 2011 legislation states that at least one third of the board members must be of the least represented gender. I'm Personally, not a fan of quotas. They provoke comments such as, undeserving women get job thanks to, to quotas. Or, we would give the position to a woman, but we couldn't find any that fit the criteria. According to a manpower survey, it's a deeply rooted masculine culture which refrains employers from the promoting women. The infamous glass ceiling relies on the distorted image of women as ambitious and men as high achieving and ruthless workers. Fortunately, society is evolving and measures are being taken by employers as well as public authorities to improve work-life balance. It would be 
a ter terrible waste for everybody not to make the most out of women's knowledge and talents. I'm convinced that mixed teams are so much more creative. They are better equipped to address clients' expectations and to respond to the diversity of society. I see that in my own cabinet, where most of the leadership positions are filled by women. Furthermore, Studies show a clear link between the number of women on boards and the financial performance of companies. From everything I have heard and witnessed, it appears that concrete tools are clearly missing to help determine women to achieve their full potential and bring the misogynistic arguments to a close. Well, I think one of the missing tools might be the European Women on Boards talent pool. More than networking, more than mentoring, this talent pool is the quality-oriented, ambitious instrument that some skeptical minds were still looking for. I really, hope to see, I really hope to see more women reach executive positions and sit on boards. To achieve this goal, actors such as women on boards are game changers. Indeed, you base your argument on excellence and merit. You promote and push women forward, not because they are women, but because they are competent and valuable candidates. By advocating that women are able to take part in strategic decision-making in synergy with men, rather than in opposition with them, you position yourself not as a know-it-all, but as an ally for those companies who wish to embrace gender mainstreaming and your talent pool will undoubtedly prove that to be a valuable database. I will conclude by saying that enhancing the female presence on boards is an excellent goal, but that this shift cannot stay confined to that sole area. I'm thinking about the IT sector, about women in the media, about female entrepreneurs. When you hear that in Brussels, less than one entrepreneur out of, his three, out of three is a woman, you know, there is still work to be done. It's only with a generalized change that things will take a new turn and mentality will open to more women in business or in politics. A last remark. We, the women, don't have to hesitate being more visible. A woman wearing a colorful dress, surrounded by dark suits, that's a picture that meets the eye. Trust me, I know. <laughs> so, let's all work to inspire women to take on professional challenges and develop their potential to the fullest. Let's do our best to prevent further waste of talent and bring some added value to the economy and even more to the humanity. Thank you for your attention. So thank you very much. After this very energizing exchange of ideas, we invite you to a no less energizing cocktail and for further networking around a, a drink. Uh, you're uh, all welcome to that cocktail. Karima is a trying to prompt me to say something, but I don't know what. Evaluation form. Oh yes, please, uh, uh, very importantly, uh, don't forget to fill the evaluation form for this session if uh, you have five minutes. Thank you very much. And the last thing, if you want to have a look at uh, the talent pool, the demonstration is available by uh, Thomas and uh, Margaret. Thank you very much.